Do your book covers fall apart by the end of the year? Let's change that. Hi everyone, welcome to Talk and Chalk. I'm Beck, and today I'm working at school, getting some things done before my family goes away to Queensland for the summer holiday. And I've heard lots and lots of people talking about different ways that they use their books, they store their books, they cover their books, they decorate their books. And I've had people asking me what I use when I cover books. So today I'm gonna to show you what I use, where I get all my stuff from, and how I actually do it. And trust me when I tell you, these things last all year long. So I've kept books from, I'm gonna check the year because my kids were beautiful and wrote the date, 2006. So these are 12 years old, these books. I'm gonna show you. Look at them. No rips, no tears, no nothing. And I get these out every single year and I show them off. I've just realized I'm very dark in this video because of the room that I'm in. I haven't got my light with me at the moment, um, but I'm sure you can see me. So here's some other ones. Beautiful. This one was incomplete, but still looks beautiful. These kids let me keep these because some of these were the second book that they went into. Um, some of them just didn't want their books and left them behind, or some of them didn't come back. They changed schools and left. These are old covers now. Some of these are ones that I drew. Some are ones that I Googled and I just got off the, the internet. And this was back before there was tons and tons and tons of stuff. This was one that I drew. This was one that I found online and when I blew it up very big, um, I didn't quite like the way that it looked. And so I drew over the top of it and added a background. So you can see when you open it up, they look really good. But look at these, all of these are in perfect condition. The key, colored pencils. I don't let them use textures. I don't let them use crayons. If you've seen my other videos, you've heard me talk about the fact that crayons will leave that waxy, oily texture. And especially when you've got a stack of books sitting in a tray to be marked, um, they rub on each other and the color gets everywhere and then it gets on their hands and it's no good. So I tell the kids they need to use colored pencil when they color these in, so. You can see that's what it looks like. And you can see there's edges there where it gets stuck on. Now for the younger kids, I do all the covering myself. Sometimes an aide might help me or a parent volunteer might help me as well. Um, but for the older kids, I teach them how to do it. And they get pretty good at it too. Once you've done it a couple of times and you hover over them to make sure that they're doing every little bit correctly and neatly and everything, then they're fine to do it for the rest of their books. So I like to keep I guess sort of themes with them. I don't want to tell the kids exactly what they have to do and where they have to do it. So this one I told them they could do whatever they wanted. I encouraged using rainbows, which is why they had that. When you get to the fish, I like to encourage using um, cool colors for the fish. This student went cool and then warm on that side. This one was just um, blues and purples. So I don't tell them where they have to do it or how they have to do it. I just encourage the colors. This was an interesting one. Um, any colors for that one. And then I'm just trying to find one of my other ones. Oh, this is another fish one. So that gives you an example of the fish there. So these were all cool colors there and she just chose to use the yellow there and she's put warm colors on the background. Very good, but I've got to show off though. I mean, how beautiful are these kids' books? This is, if you haven't seen my video yet on um, classroom expectations, I talk about book work expectations. This was my expectation. I'll pick up another kid. This was different student. Look at that beautiful work. Look at that cursive with pen. Look at the underlining. So beautiful. This was a year six class. Even in maths. I'm just trying to find a maths book now. Which one was maths? That was maths. So neat and tidy. Underlined. Marking. That's not my marking. That's their marking. So that was peer marking or self-guided marking, depending on what we were doing. Look at it. Beautiful. I didn't keep just the good kids books. I kept lots of different ones. Having those high expectations and utilizing those kids that find it easy to be neat and tidy in your book, you know, they, they role model for other kids and then other kids want to do it as well. But I kind of moved away from those covers when more things came in when I came across this. This is amazing. It's the best thing you'll ever have. So you can see I've got my old ones in there for if I ever want to go back to them on the bits of paper there, and A4, you just pop it on the photocopier, put it to A4 to A3, which is usually 141%, copy away. And they wrap around the books perfectly. No cutting, don't need to cut anything, it fits perfect. 
So the ones that I, I'll show you some of the pages in here. So we've got, this is one that I've blown up to, to use today. We've got some other ones here. I like that English one. Problem with that one is once you fold it, you only kind of see the dragon's head. But, um, handwriting. These are really good too if you're doing, you know, tessellations or patterns. The HSIE has kind of gone now. So that one's not, you'd have to change the title on that one. I like this maths one. I've covered the maths one for you. This is actually a game. So you can see, like they can roll a dice and actually play this game. Um, so I asked them to colour in the arrows one colour for the whole game. And then these sections here are another colour for the whole game. And then the faces are a third colour for the whole thing. And then if they're an early finisher, they get to play the game, opening up their book. So there's lots in there. This is really, really good. So you can see on there it's called Book Covers to Create. And it's by Louisa Edelston. It's even got my maiden name on there still. That's how long I've had this book. Um, it's from Domini, a Domini one. And the ISBN number there is 186251244-2. So if you're looking it up, those are the details for you. So this was me printing them out onto A3. I like this one, the spelling one. I like to ask them to use desert colors for the patterns and then on the background make it look like sand so you usually use you know a light yellow or orange or whatever for the background there that one looks really good this one to the lizard and this one is the maths one that I was just telling you about so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to put the camera at an angle where you can see me covering the book so I've just grabbed some random books that were sitting at my house with my son he has these books all the time to draw and write in um, so there's a standard exercise book this one is seven millimeters 64 pages so it might be a tad smaller or bigger but it doesn't matter so you can see though actually is this a bit smaller oh do you know what here's a proper school one I'm going to switch to this one that's a proper school one so you can see when you put it in there it does have edging around it it's a bit bigger and um, I'm going to show you how I do that so let's flip the camera and see if this works Okay guys, I'm standing behind, I'm just gonna take my necklace off so you don't hear it jingling. I'm standing behind the laptop at the moment, the Surface Pro, and I'm gonna attempt this as best as I can. So here's the book that we're going to use. The first thing you need to do is fold this in half. So get it corner to corner perfectly, lay it flat and fold it in half. And that is where your book is gonna go inside. Now, it's always good to write their name beforehand because sometimes if you're doing this with music on or you're talking to someone, you're gonna forget whose book it is that's going in there. So, get the name on it. So you open it up to the center where the staples are, lay it flat with the crease that's there. And then what you do is just, you can actually, I don't know if you can see, but you can see through there just to make sure that it's nice and flat. The line that's on the other side of that helps, there it is there, helps guide me. So I lay it flat on that crease and then what I do is I lift up this top bit here. So you can still see the bit of cardboard that's the front of the book. This is all the paper here. And then what I do is I fold this on it and you can actually feel the edge of it so that there's no gaps, oh sorry, so that there's no gaps in there. You can feel the edge of it. Fold that along. I flip it around, I just give it a little bit of a, a tug there to make sure it's nice and flat in there. Do the same thing at the other end, fold it up, bring it in. Now I don't do the edges yet, I wait. Now this is the time when I glue. So I get my glue, just your normal stick glue and this is why the kids can do it. I put it on the paper and then a little bit across the top there and fold. And then I go back and do the other side. And obviously this is after they've colored it. So you want them to color the whole thing, get it done. And you know what, it times up when you say time is up. If they're not finished, they're not finished. They can always go back and color the rest of it later. So now that's done, I'm gonna give it a bit of a fold back and just get rid of any of those extra bits there that might be sort of air bubble wise sticking in. Okay, now I go back and this is now when I do these edges. So glue the paper, a little bit onto the book, and whoops that's where I've stuffed it up and this is where it's beneficial because you can just undo it so I'm going to make sure that's nice and smooth get rid of those creases 
See, I'm not cutting the corners or anything. I don't need to do that. I'm not that anal. And they still look nice. I'm just going to give that a fold before I do it since I stuffed up the other one. Again, I'm going to glue, 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 glue. Glue the book. There. And that's now done. That's a book cover. Easily done. This glue will last you all year. I've never, ever, ever had a cover come off when I've made it this way. Okay? Okay, so that was pretty easy. I mean, I don't know how many minutes that video went. I didn't look at it. So <laughs> that's now done, and then I can do it with all the others as well. That's not to say, though, that obviously this is you get this book and then that's every single one of your covers. Um, I have done other ones in paint before, but like I said, sometimes the paint deteriorates. So if it's a book that you're not using every single day, um, if it's a book that you're using maybe once or twice a week, that would be a good book to, you know, do a paint cover on. I love the butterfly one, you know, where you stick the paint in the middle and you fold it and squish it out and then that's your book cover. Same thing. I use the same method, though, with the glue and the folding, all the same. I don't like using contact just because it costs money to go and get contact and it takes a while to do it and it's really fiddly and if it's not done right it just ends up looking messy at least if these ones aren't done right you saw straight away as soon as I folded it and it didn't look right I just pulled it back up and redid it again it doesn't really work that way with contact especially onto cardboard I don't like sending books home to be covered by parents only because I'm trying to build a relationship with those parents and really giving them a job to do at home when they're probably very, very busy at the beginning of the year. It's really not a good way for me to win them over. If that's a school expectation and your school has been doing it for years and parents are used to it, that's your school, that's fine. That's just not my personal preference. If I want parents to do a job, um, I guess I want them to be doing something more meaningful that they're actually going to get something out of than covering a book. I've got friends with kids who have started school and they all said to me, am I meant to be covering 30 books at the beginning of the year? And I went, well, I've never done that with my parents, but that's your school. That's what you do. So that's entirely up to you. There are places that print um, vinyl covers. So you just pick up the, the blank book, which is over here now. You just pick up the blank book and it's got a vinyl cover that just slots into it. And then the next year you can use the vinyl cover again and again and again. But again, I think I've said this a couple of times now. I like doing the colouring in part with my kids. I like sitting down in those first few days and I usually do it in the afternoon when it's hot because it's summer when we come back to school here and sitting down and just colouring in, having some music on in the background. Class Dojo has some wonderful concentration music that you can put on um, or, you know, stick on YouTube and pick some songs that you know are appropriate and just sit there and colour with your kids. It's a great way for them to do something and chat and get to know each other. Um, feel comfortable in the room. It's a good way for me to gauge anyone's fine motor issues. This is also a good way to gauge who your kids are that like to rush or that take their time or that get really finicky over making everything perfect. There's going to be that kid that goes, done. That's a good pinpoint there for you straight away to see what kind of an effort they put into their work. And this is an easy thing to gauge that too because you can go, oh, okay, well, I, I thank you for giving it a go, but you know, look how great. Um, it looks when we actually put the game pieces in different colors because now I can play it and see it and then um, you know you start breaking the ice that way and building a relationship with your kids so that's why I like doing that activity all right I'm going to leave it there because I better get back to my classroom on my west wing now and finish setting up in there because it's only a couple of days now before Queensland and my kids are actually in the next room playing on the computer I've brought them in with me today for a bit of fun so if you liked this video, I'd very much appreciate a thumbs up. I like the feedback. And what I'm going to do is chuck down my link there. If you want to click to subscribe, I'll put one of my other back to school videos at the top there. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and I look forward to seeing any book covers you guys do. Send them through. Thanks, guys. Bye.